Ian St. John and Ron Yates came in 1961. Now they were the greatest signings, and they were the beginning of Liverpool. He was a tower, Yates, fantastic man. Six feet, one and a half, the quickest thing in two feet, strong as an ox. When Yates looks back, his abiding memory strikes a similar chord. I think possibly uh, signing for Liverpool Football Club and, and meeting uh, Bill Shankly for the first time. Uh, as I said, he was, he was a hell of a man. And I remember uh, meeting him in a hotel in, in uh, Edinburgh. I'd never met the man. And uh, Dundee United, who I come from, was at one side, their directors, and of course Bill Shankly and his directors was the other. And I thought, which side do I go? And I didn't have to make up my mind. Shanks walked out and he said, ah, he said, uh, I said, Jesus, he said, you must be about seven foot tall, son. And I said, no, I'm uh, six foot three and a half. And he went, that's near enough seven foot for me. I would describe myself as a 120% player. You know, I hated to get beat. I was possibly a good captain, maybe a little bit of a bully. Uh, I liked everybody else to be doing their work, you know, and it went well that way. Well, Ronnie Yeats uh, uh, was one of the cornerstones here at Liverpool. Uh, his coming, along with Ian St. John, around the same time, was the, the very beginning of Liverpool's rise. And they did more for the rise than anybody else. Yeats at the back, St. John at the front. Liverpool won the second division championship by eight points in 1962. decision has come and I must admit this is the first time in my career in television I've ever commentated on the toss of a coin. He threw the coin up and in that night it was real mud, muddy pitch and it stuck in a divot on its side and I'm no joking it was wavering towards the tail and I said yeah, this is impossible you can't do that and the referee picked it up and said a toss again. There's Ron Yates, number five. I only hope he's a great gambler. Right, that's the all-important coin. Up it goes. Who's won it? Who's won it? Nobody. Oh, my goodness. Right, let's have another go. Oh, this is terrible. Liverpool! Liverpool are through to the semi-final on the toss of a coin. Well done, Ron Yates. The march into Europe sparked the birth of the infamous all-red kit, Shankly's idea, and Ron Yates, the perfect man to model the new look. I was the guy that uh, tried it on first. By all accounts, it made me look really huge. And he went, I'll do me. He says, I'll tell you what, you look seven feet tall, Ron. We are going to play in this kit. And uh, we've played uh, ever since on it. And you know there's such fanatical supporters and if you lose at Wembley your name's going to be mud to them. I don't think uh, they'll shut it because even if we do get beat, but that's not going to be the case anyway. We're going to win at Wembley, they'll have no trouble whatsoever. And there's the famous trophy, there's the Liverpool chairman raising his hand. Mr. Follows next to Her Majesty. And behind Her Majesty, Mr. Reynolds, the Leeds chairman. To get the cup final, is was extra time, and we beat Leeds United 2-1. Mm -hmm. That was Ronnie Yates picking up the cup for the first time ever that Liverpool had won after 73 years. 73 years. And that's the hardest cup in the world to win. It's a one-off job. Never mind the European Cup. That's virtually new. Winning the FA Cup's the hardest cup. It took 73 years for... And I thought it was a terrible disgrace that would have suffered the taunts of people saying you haven't won the cup yet. Mm. Now, that was the greatest moment of my life, winning the cup. Not for me, but for the people in Liverpool. For many Liverpool followers, this was the unforgettable day. The resilient spirit of the 1965 side was passed down to their successors in the red shirts for the next 20 years and more. These players were in at the start of a dynasty. It was an emotional time, getting the cup from the Queen. Uh, and in fact, I just wanted to throw it into the crowd, the Liverpool supporters crowd, and say, look, you know, we've won it now. 
share it between you. So of course we'd won it in extra time and I bound up the stairs, gets to the Queen and she went, you must be very tired. And everything went out of my head, you know, I said, I'm absolutely knackered. And I couldn't believe what I'd said. And my face was redder than my shirt. And, and she just looked at me and she went, I could imagine so. One of the reporters said, no, it's a nightclub, only five minutes away in a taxi. Do you, do you fancy going? So I think it was three of us went. <laughs> Ma, as it was a very funny night up. I could see the camera rolling and I thought, well, <laughs> I'm certainly not, not going to get anywhere near that dance floor. I must have had a few They said, you know, they're looking for volunteers, so I went, yeah, no problem, I was in the front. Didn't think nothing of it, mainly because I probably had a few drinks. Came home, and it was on the next night. I'm sitting in the living room with my wife and the kids, and the wife said, that looks like you. I went, it's not me. I went, I'm trying to say it wasn't me, you know, and they got a close-up of my face and everything. And I had to say, well, yeah, it was me. I said, but, you know, somebody forced me up, you know, to dance. There they are, the champions of England. And one hit with a replica of the championship cup. Heatley just couldn't grow enough for that. It's Callaghan. Awkward one again. It's a good goal. Scored by Ron Yates. <laughs> Do you remember the boss phoning up the, the specialist one day? Somebody came in and was injured, and the specialist said, Oh, you'll be off for a month, son. And he'd came back and he'd said, uh, I've been to see the specialist. Um, he said, I'll be off for a month, boss. He said, what? And immediately he was on the phone to the specialist. He was, you know, as a specialist in his own field. And I remember him saying, you're not dealing with human beings here, sir. A lot of people uh, say now, you don't need motivator. But I tell you, he was the best motivator I've ever seen. Uh, I remember Ian Culligan, you know, the, the door was six foot six. And Ian Culligan's only five foot six. And when the tactic talk was finished, he couldn't get back through the door. He'd built him up so much. He felt about seven feet tall. And this was every one of us. He came out of that room and you were thinking, how many is it going to be this week? And that's how I felt. You know, I, I can't say about other players, but I think he affected him the same way. I know personally that he affected me like that. <laughs>